a healthy US dollars 1.06 billion, up 13.5% year over year in constant currency, and 11.9% in reported dollar terms. Our EBIT margins for Q4 came in at 16.4%, up 250 basis points quarter on quarter, in line with the trajectory that we had communicated during our Q3 results. We added 31 new clients during Q4 and notably increased our count of US dollars 50 million plus customers by two to 13. Our order inflow for the quarter came in at US dollars 1.35 billion, helping us close the full year order inflow at US dollars 4.87 billion. Our expanded and diversified capabilities combined with enhanced scale are creating significant cross-sell and upsell opportunities, cementing our partnership status at an, as an industry leader with our existing clients. We are now a formidable contender for strategic partnerships with new clients through multi-year and multi-tower deals. While we do observe a cautious approach towards technology spending, in general, owing to macro uncertainties, clients focus on leveraging technology for enhanced competitiveness remains intact. This client's this client goals hold a significant long-term upside for our full stack end-to-end -end capabilities. We are already seeing a growing trend of deals where savings from efficiencies are being used to fund in-flight transformation projects. Let me give you an example. On Semi, a global leader in intelligent power and image sensing technologies has chosen a LTI enterprise IT support platform. This multi-year deal will involve LTI Mind Tree collaborating with On Semi's IT team to drive innovation and increase efficiency. The IT transformation is part of On Semi's broader strategy to streamline operations and invest in growth areas, such as electric vehicles, ADAS, alternative energy, and industrial automation. With our robust next generation delivery capabilities and continued focus on innovation and agility, we are confident that we will capitalize on several such exciting opportunities that FY24 will present. For instance, one next generation capability where we have made significant investment and progress is generative AI. We firmly believe that generative AI will create the next phase of the autonomous enterprise. We have launched our Gen AI platform, which will allow enterprises to accelerate their concept to value journey with a focus on ethical use of generative AI, sustainability, and data privacy. Several marquee customers include a top global bank, a multinational CPG leader, and a leading insurance brokerage are already leveraging it for their unique needs. With that, let me now turn on to our businesses. Our banking, financial services, and insurance business grew 20.1% year over year in Q4. The banking industry is currently focused on cost takeout programs with an emphasis on cash conservation. Some clients have temporary hiring freezes in place. In insurance, the core modernization and consolidation programs that we are currently part of, part of give us growth visibility. Our BFSI deal pipeline is promising with several large deals in the final stages. In Q4, our high-tech media and entertainment business grew 2.8% year over year. The high-tech industry is focusing on customer support, subscription management, and product engineering. While the decision-making timeline remain unextended, vendor consolidation has been driving up deals, driving up deal sizes. We are favorably, favorably positioned here evident from our success with our new logo on semi. Our manufacturing and resources business grew 12.4% year over year in Q4, 
In the automotive space, we look forward to gaining from vendor consolidation and expanding with our unique industry solutions. In the energy industry, stable commodity prices are incentivizing clients to persist with investments towards digital transformation. We are seeing this trend across the energy value chain of upstream, midstream, and downstream with focus on improving operational efficiency, health and safety, and lowering uh, carbon footprint. For Q4, our retail, CPG, travel, transportation, and hospitality business grew 9.5% year over year. Higher interest rates and sticky inflation has led to reduce cons uh, consumer confidence. This has been in retail and CPG. Achieve channel and commerce capabilities continues to be, give us unique opportunities in the current business environment. In the travel, transportation, and hospitality business, airlines, hotel, and car rental companies continue to see strong business activity. Our health, life sciences, and public services business grew 6.8%. In healthcare, we will maintain our emphasis on value-based care and expand our, expand our coverage across product engineering and testing. In the, the focus is on aggressive our ERP, CRM, and digital engineering services. In terms of geographies, America contributed 71%, Europe contributed 15.4%, and our rest of the world contributed 12.7% of our revenues for the quarter. There has been no significant cancellations or deferment of projects from any of our clients, indicating the strength of our client relationships and our value proposition. Activity in SAP digital and data services, especially the move to the cloud, which presents for the company to expand. As a people-powered organization, we value our employees and their contributions to our success. We remain grateful to our dedicated team of skilled professionals who have ensured client satisfaction and flawless delivery even in the midst of a large merger and integration. Our attrition continues to trend lower, largely in line with what the industry is also experiencing. Our quarterly annualized attrition stood at 13.7%, a significant improvement of 440 basis points over the previous quarter, bringing our LTM attrition down to 20.2%. Our return to office program is progressing well. Opening new satellite offices has proven an effective talent strategy, and we remain committed to regularly reviewing and refining our approach. We have been recognized as one of the best organizations for women in 2023 by the Economic Times. I'm also proud to inform that we have been recognized as the, at the Diversity Awards 2023 for the top five most innovative practices in the women LND programs and top 20 most innovative practices in the women returning programs categories. These recognitions validated our tireless efforts in building a truly inclusive environment where every individual feels valued, respected, and empowered, regardless of gender and other differences. With this, I will now turn over the call to Vinith for the financial highlights. Thank you, DC. <clears throat> good evening and good morning to everyone on the call. It is great to be with all of you again for our quarterly and annual earnings. We ended the fiscal year 2023 on a strong note. The revenue stood at 4.1 billion, registering a growth of 17.2% in dollar terms. The corresponding constant currency growth was 19.9%. EBIT margin was 16.2% compared to 17.8% in FY22. PAT margin was at 13.3% compared to 15.1% in FY22. The absolute PAT was 4,410 crores. 
EPS, EPS for the full year was 149 rupees 10 paisa, an increase of 11.5% over FY22. The effective tax rate for the full year was 23.8%. Let me now take you through the financial highlights for Q4 FY23. Our revenue stood at 1.06 billion, up 11.9% on year-on-year -year basis. The corresponding constant currency growth was 13.5%. The Q1Q growth was 1% in dollar terms and 0.7% in constant currency terms. EBIT margins came in at 16.4% compared to 13.9% in the previous quarter. We had indicated last quarter that our margins would expand by 200 to 250 basis point, and we are pleased to deliver at the higher end of that range. The following three factors equally contributed to the sequential improvement in margins. Absence of furloughs and higher working days in Q4, AD BIPs, lower integration cost compared to Q3, AD BIPs, and operational efficiency and productivity improvement, 90 basis point. Net forex loss for the quarter was 6.4 million US dollars compared to a gain of 5.9 million US dollars in the previous quarter. Pat margin was for the quarter was 12.8% compared to 11.6% in the previous quarter. The effective tax rate for the quarter was 22.9% compared to 23.6% in Q3 FY23. Basic EPS was 37 rupees 70 paise for the quarter compared to 33 rupees 80 paise in Q Q3 of 523. In Q4, the bill DSO stood at 60 days compared to 61 days in the pre to cash flow to PAT substantially increased to 88.5% versus 65.8% in the previous quarter. Our robust cash management led to cash and investment balance of 155 crores compared to 8,086 crores in Q3 FY23. This increase in Balance is potent. Our utilization, excluding trainees, in the quarter was 81.7% compared to 82.9% in the previous quarter. As of March 31st, 2023, our cash flow hedges stood at 3,840 million. Hedges on the balance sheet were 441 million US dollars. The board of directors has recommended a final dividend of 40 rupees per share, subject to shareholders approval, taking our overall in dividend for the full financial year to 60 rupees per share. As DC mentioned earlier, effective 1st April, we are operating under one unified systems and policies. In line with this, we are also refreshing and publishing our ESG goals as LTI Mindtree. The same is detailed in our investor deck. Let me share some key goals that we have set for ourselves. The top one on sustainability includes replacing 85% of current energy usage with rene renewable energy by 2030, 100% waste recycling and becoming water positive by 2030. We are pleased to share that in Q4, our Bengaluru and Chennai facilities were awarded the CII National Award on Eff Efficient Energy Usage. These awards validate our commitment to the goals we have pledged on ESG front. I now hand it back to DC for the business outlook. Thank you, Vinit. Looking ahead, we remain optimistic about our prospects. While Q1 FY24 performance may see some impact of continued slow client decision making, our strong value proposition, robust order book, and steady pipeline buildup gives us confidence that we shall still be able to deliver industry-leading double-digit revenue growth for FY24. One of the areas that we are particularly excited about is the cross-sell and upsell opportunities 
in existing accounts and our concentrated mining efforts on our Focus 100 accounts. By leveraging our expertise and scale across a range of industries and technologies, we have been able to create positive momentum and drive growth across our client base. In addition, our unified transformation solution is helping customers in their transformation journeys across value chains, stacks, and ecosystems. This is particularly important as businesses continue to face increasing pressure to do more with less. With our deep expertise, commitment to innovation and collaboration, and focus on delivering value to our clients, we are confident that we will continue to drive growth and success in the future. Let me now open this call to questions. Thank you, DC. A few points while we wait for the question queue to assemble. All participants will be in listen-only mode during the Q&A. If you would like to ask a question, please use the raise hand option on your screen. You will then be prompted to unmute your line and ask the question. Request you to please state your organization's name before asking your question. I request that you keep your question to one and a follow-up as that will allow us to take more participants for Q&A. The first question is from the line of Sandeep Shah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to understand, uh, entering into FI 2024, is there any large client-specific issue which you foresee within your top 20 clients? And uh, can you explain the same with the decline in this quarter within top 5 clients and top top 11 to 20 clients, what has led to this as a whole? And also outlook for the high tech uh, entering into FI24 with some of your large clients are announcing layoffs uh, at a regular interval. So will it be a spoil sport in terms of the growth rates for FI24 in terms of high tech uh, 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 for you versus company average as a whole? And second, in terms of the margin outlook, uh, how do we see from a Q4 levels how the margin will shape up? in the first half as well as second half of the financial year. So you asked uh, many questions, Sandeep. Let me just go one by one. Uh, your, uh, your, your first question was uh, any specific issues with any clients in the top 20. Uh, I don't think there is any specific issue with any of the clients. I think things are... Uh, the, in fact, if you look at the the overall revenues of the clients from uh, you know from FY22 to FY23, you will see that the revenues have grown, which means our efforts of mining is working very well with those uh, clients. Uh, in terms of uh, you know, uh, uh, what was your next question? Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, is there uh, no large client specific issues? Then uh, uh, are you also witnessing the same within the high tech vertical as a whole? Because one of your yeah. large uh, clients has been announcing layoff at a regular interval. Uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, as of now, again, uh, you know, if you look at our uh, overall high tech portfolio, uh, there is, uh, again, I will say the same thing. There is nothing which is uh, specifically uh, bothering us. In fact, uh, for some of our clients, there could be opportunities for us. But only one thing I can say is that, uh, you know, some of the decision making in terms of start of the project, they have been a little delayed. So we are actually, we are, we have one opportunities where we need to just, uh, you know, get them started. So overall, again, I don't think there is any specific concern or specific client specific concern in terms of, uh, you know, our high tech uh, uh, portfolio. And in terms of margin, let me answer, ask, uh, we need to answer that. Uh, so Sandeep, uh, as we have mentioned uh, this in the past, uh, our 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 aspiration is basically to return to the same margin levels as what the, both the com independent companies were operating in the uh, in, in before the prior to merger. That is that in the seventeen to eighteen percent range. Though we don't want to call it out, but I'm, given that this mathematics is publicly available, I'm just making it very. That's the that's the aspiration at which we want to operate. We'll have probably a little bit of a slow start and we'll catch up during the year and get to that 70 to 80 percent range. Okay, thanks. And last follow up uh, DC, your comment about this year's growth rate being double digit. So, the ask rate, if I'm not wrong, on a constant currency for the next four quarters is 2.7 percent, with 1Q growth is likely to be tapered. 
so there would be a heavy lifting required from 2q to 4q what gives you confidence regarding the sale well i, I think uh, you know if i look at the deal activity uh, which is happening currently that gives us the confidence and uh, i will i will let sudhir also chime in but overall our pipeline is very strong our order book is very strong and the you know couple of things that i called out in my opening remarks is for example we have uh, we have good opportunities in uh, bfsi but couple of clients have kind of gone through some freeze and we are hoping that by end of q1 those freezes will be uh, they they will be kind of opened up so we should be able to begin we should be able to ramp up but uh, overall our deal activity is very very strong so do you want to comment yeah absolutely so this year as you said the order intake is up uh, you know between quarters by 21% to 1.35 billion uh, in q2 uh, and uh, the large deal pipeline you all remember that we shared a number of 3.2 billion dollars uh, during our investor day that's up to 3.6 billion dollars now so the combination of uh, of order intake and continuing activity on the large deals is what gives us confidence okay Thanks. Next question is from the line of Mohit Jain. Mohit, you can please go ahead. Yes. So first was related to pricing for the quarter specifically Q4. Uh, now headcount is slightly down, utilization lower, revenues up. So how should we read this disconnect? Is there a different base or some other revenue that you have got during the quarter which is pulling this number up? Uh, and then I'll have a follow up. See, uh, if you see uh, Mohit, uh, the the main reason for the headcount uh, difference is the attrition, uh, as you you would see, has significantly dropped in uh, Q4, and because of that, our net headcount, um, and by the same time as we were uh, combining both the organizations, we had reduced our uh, lateral intake. in q3 and q4 as the bench from the organization was coming together and we were getting a better idea about the uh, skill distribution of that bench that's kind of resulted into uh, reduced uh, headcount but is there a volume drop during the quarter or uh, pricing is stable and there's a volume increase of 0.7% pricing is pretty much stable uh, just remember as dc has mentioned that uh, in the in his opening remarks that the nature of the deals and the revenue profile is changing from uh, uh, cost uh, from the transformation to the cost takeouts to that extent that's the, uh, the that's the change that is coming in but otherwise the pricing that we are getting is pretty much stable okay and the follow up is on vertical like i was really scared on bfsi but you did well and i thought high tech will be okay but high tech was really bad during the year so what is exactly happening there and do you expect this to reverse in one q like when you say there is a freeze etc uh, is it primarily bfsi or do you think that will continue high tech as well i think you know if i look at uh, bfsi uh, uh, bfsi has grown for the full year at uh, 23% and high tech has uh, high tech mne together has grown uh, around 14.5% so i think both the verticals have done well and uh, you know we just talked about on semi which is the deal that we have signed which is in the high tech so essentially uh, there are more opportunities in high tech there are the, the activity is pretty strong uh, but all that we are saying is uh, uh, we will see a, a bit of a lull in the q1 purely because of the fact that some clients are going through some freeze where we are we know that we need to start this engagement but we cannot so it's a delayed start rather than anything else and we are very hopeful that All, all these issues will get resolved in Q1, uh, uh, so we should be able to get onto the rhythm as far as uh, Q2 is concerned. But otherwise, we are still very confident about overall situation with respect to the pipeline that we have in BFSI as well as high tech. So we want to. We will grow in one Q, right? That's what you're looking at. So I would say basis, and that's what uh, I think. So what DC was alluding to. we have consistently grown one quarter might be up for one vertical one quarter might be not as good as uh, for the so look at no, sir, what i mean to ask is at the company level we will still expect you to grow in q1 whatever is the number yeah oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. definitely okay great thank you sir and all the best thank you uh, the next question we will take from the line of sudhir gundupalli sudhir uh, uh, 
Uh, can you please uh, go ahead? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so my my question is to Sudhir. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sir, yes. Sir, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I was asking, uh, standing out from the rest of the industry and uh, despite going through the integration process, your deal booking on a sequential basis has been uh, uh, very good. Uh, so I was just uh, trying to understand, is there any seasonality which helped you here? Because we don't really know the prior year uh, Q3 to Q4 uh, uh, deal booking uh, sort of trends. Is there any seasonality that helped you here? Or it is it is just that the uh, closures you have just seen closures uh, uh, to be very good despite uh, the challenging macro and that's what uh, uh, is resulting in the numbers. Yeah, no, there's no, no, seasonality. There's no seasonality. There's no seasonality here. Uh, so they, but you know, I think what we have is we do have renewals in this, uh, which is actually a good sign, right? Which is means means that you know in, uh, that uh, our client satisfaction is good and we're renewing these contracts, so which also gives us, you know, that stability of our, you know, both from an order intake perspective, as well as a future revenue growth perspective. So I think, you know, that's, that's really reflected in both. And the deal wins are starting to show, especially as you see this quarter's, uh, the, you know, the Q4 order intake is where it reflects some large deal wins, like the on semi deal that uh, DC just spoke about. Certainly. And, and if you were to just look at the net new part within this and any broader color, if, even if you don't want to uh, quantify them, uh, how the trend has been from Q3 to Q4. So actually, you know, if you look at order intake, right, we are seeing good all round order intake. You know, it's across verticals and it's across regions, which again, which is, you know, the, the broad based growth comment that we made. The thing with uh, the order intake is the only uh, color, uh, the additional color I'll provide is that this is more in the you know, efficiency space, the cost takeout space. And therefore, you know, these involve transitions and these will involve a slower ramp, you know, across the year, right? As, as you, uh, you know, these kind of deals are usually take over from, from you know, either vendor, vendor consolidation or clients consolidating their own operations. So it does take a little bit of time to ramp up as well as, you know, make sure that, you know, the transitions complete first and then we start to build these clients. So that's the that's the only difference in terms of the order in, or the additional color in terms of order. Rate. Sure, Sudhir. And one last question to DC, if I may. Uh, so DC, we have always been guiding for as individual entities. We have always been guiding for industry leading growth, but now our base has almost doubled. So there is some mathematical optics related to it. Despite that, uh, it's it's impressive that you are still calling out for industry leading growth. Uh, and one more thing, this time peculiar in FI24 about the industry is that there has been a huge divergence with some companies uh, guiding for 3 to 6% growth all the way up to mid-teens. Uh, so when you talk about industry-leading growth in that kind of a backdrop uh, and, and with a much higher base, uh, again, uh, any any further color on that? That's it. Well, I think... Thanks. Yeah, well, I think when I say industry leading, it is it is not. I mean, what we mean by that is the in the industry leading quadrant. I mean, are we able to? Are we one of those companies which are you know showing the uh, showing the growth in that quadrant? And we are very confident that we want to stay there. And that's why I said that in, in spite of uh, you know we may see a little bit of uh, you know softness in Q1, but we are very confident that we should be able to get into a double digit growth. And we want to convert that double-digit growth into industry leading as far as if uh, 24 is concerned. Thanks, DC. All the very best. Thank you, Sudhir. Uh, next, we'll, we will take uh, the question from the line of Vibhor Singhal. Uh, Vibhor, can you please go ahead? Uh, yeah, hi. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks for taking my question. And uh, congrats on a very strong margin expansion. Uh, so, uh, uh, DC, my question was to maybe you and uh, Sudhir, uh, uh, as uh, already uh, we've discussed, we've had a very strong deal flow uh, in this quarter uh, as compared to Q and Q at least. Uh, now, one of the concerns that is uh, paramount in the industry at this point of time is that while deals are being awarded, I mean, we ourselves one deal, uh, had two large deals announced very recently. A lot of the competitors are also announcing large deals. Uh, so the concern that is there is that uh, many of these deals are being awarded but their execution timeline is not very certain. The client is not yet giving a certainty as to when to start execution on, the, on this deal. It might, this might get delayed or let's say maybe, I mean, cancel, of course, is the uh, uh, worst case scenario. So are we also facing that in our deal flows that we are looking at the deals that we have won? And is that what is adding to the uncertainty in FI24? And a related question is that uh, we've always talked about size uh, helping us win large deals. 
uh, we've uh, won couple of we've announced couple of large deals in the past uh, month or so uh, so uh, i mean any more color on that as to how the the progress on that front is happening in terms of our uh, increased size helping us win most la more large deals uh, too many questions but let me try to answer uh, see first of all let, let me just give you a color of uh, what is happening in the marketplace if you look at large deals many of the deals that we are uh, pursuing right now are more efficiency play which is in other words cost takeout and uh, many of this cost takeout deals as sudhir articulated has a has a transition and when you do the transition it kind of you kind of ramp it up ramp up the teams and then the real billing takes a little bit of time to start so and what we are seeing right now is in in certain situations the everything is decided but you know the the, the start date is a little delayed and we are very hopeful that that will ease up over a period of time so that's the situation it's a cost more cost take out deals more uh, which is in a way it is good because these deals tend to be multi year uh, and which is exactly what we are doing with on semi but uh, it's more of a delayed start rather than anything else so that's what it, it, that's what the scenario is which probably is very similar across uh, the market across the industries uh, and in terms of size uh, we are very confident that uh, the size and scale and the capabilities that we have it's not just the size it's the the the, the capabilities that we have as an integrated organization is, is something that will help us in terms of getting a seat on the table and whenever there's a large deal we should be able to compete you know uh, with, with any kind of situation i think that's what we mean we are already seeing some results and we are very confident that as we go along we will be seeing more of these scenarios So, Dinesh, if you want to add anything, all these are you covered? Sure. Just one small follow-up question uh, to either Nasiket or uh, Vinith, if I can. Uh, with the increased size and the workforce, the integrated workforce, uh, do we expect the subcon expense uh, to come down? I know it's not uh, basically uh, exceptionally high as compared to the industry for both the individual companies that we had. But do you think with the integrated uh, workforce, we could see that coming down as a percentage of revenue over the next uh, couple of years? So, but as you indicated, it is already uh, you know relatively low for us as compared to some of our peers, and we continue to remain focused on trying to reduce that. And some bit of uh, bench availability will uh, hopefully also help that. So that is a ongoing program for us. We're not targeting a particular percentage or a reduction, but we continue to look for opportunities where we can reduce. Sure, yeah, great to hear that. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks a lot for taking my questions. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Bhavor. Uh, we will take the next question from the line of uh, Solab Govila. Solab, uh, can you please go ahead? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for taking my question. So, uh, my question, first question is regarding the uh, revenue growth this quarter. I'm just trying to understand. Uh, given that the furloughs have reversed uh, which were there last quarter and there were no major cancellations and deferments that you mentioned earlier so so what's the reason for a sequential soft revenue growth this quarter i mean you mentioned there's some brief there's some freeze in bfsi but could you elaborate on nature of softness that we've seen in high tech vertical i mean this is within which service lines within high tech and is that concentrated to few clients or it's more broad based yeah so i think if we look at this quarter right you'll see that um, you know the the things that we talked about the delayed decision making is what and you know the slower pace of of some of these ramp ups as well as the freezes that's the reason why you know there are some hiring freezes in place as clients are you know their own as they're going through their own cycles they they have certain some certain clients have some hiring freezes in place so that's what's reflected in in this quarter uh, and you know we've been focused on making sure that our order intake remains strong and that we you know our book of business across the board right in, including you know our existing book of business remains you know we have uh, it remains intact as well as we grow it with with the new order intake so that's been the focus as these you know as as the environment the macro environment improves and we see clients start to you know release budgets we will start to, you know which we expect in you know in the coming quarters that's when we'll we'll start to see some of that the you know which is what gives us the confidence for the full year growth is sure and and with respect to high tech any comments on the high tech vertical with respect to see i think you know if you look at high tech right they're also going through a cycle of efficiency as uh, dc said 
So we are focused on the deals activity that we are seeing in the high tech space, and frankly, we are seeing some good deal activity. So that's the nature. You know, I think see quarterly phenomena. You know, you'll have cyclical. You know, there will be some ups and downs. But you know, as DC said, you know, on a year-on-year basis, high tech grew fourteen and a half percent. We are seeing some good deal activity. So on a full year FY twenty four basis, we still think we'll have a. You know, there's there's good potential for us to grow high tech. It's a billion dollar plus business for us, and we have really strong presence and strong capabilities. Uh, so we'll continue to leverage that. Sure, uh, and and just a quick follow up uh, on the outlook. Um, uh, one is that uh, this outlook that we provided for the full year. Uh, do you think that is going to be more broad based across verticals, or it's uh, specific to one vertical versus the other? Plus, on the um, one Q softness that we talked about, is it going to be relative to four Q performance, or versus the historical one Q trend that we've seen? I think the uh, you know. As far as the uh, first quarter performance is concerned, I think some of the behaviors that we have seen uh, in terms of as we as to the articulated some of the uh, freeze and all those things that that is kind of continuing, and we are hoping that all those things will ease off by the end of Q1. So that's where uh, you know we feel that uh, there could be some softness, and uh, I, I think at this point of time it is fair to assume that we are just talking with respect to the. The economic conditions that's existing in Q4 kind of extending into uh, Q1. I think this is just one build on it that you know we do have a license component that exists in Q4, which we will not have in Q1. So you know what we are focused on is the like for like services growth in Q1. Understood. Thanks for taking my question. Okay. Thank you, Sura. Uh, next question we will take from the line of uh, Manik Taneja. Manik, uh, can you please go ahead? Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just had a question with regards to uh, the way our headcount metrics have been trending. So through the course of last uh, or in FI23, you were adding pressures across both the Heritage Mindtree and Heritage LTI organization. And this quarter, we've seen headcount decline. So how how do you think about, uh, about our delivery uh, going into FI24? given the bench that we have and if you could also talk about any plans for fresh additions for the next year so Monica, as i said i think uh, we had paused our fresher intake uh, in q3 and q4 as well as reduced our lateral hiring in those two quarters as we were uh, consolidating bench from both the organizations and getting better visibility into the skill sets that are available as a consolidated company which we have you know, done over these uh, quarters. So as I said uh, uh, previously, uh, we are now uh, going back to our usual uh, campus uh, onboarding plan. Uh, so going into FY24, we will continue our FY24 onboarding plan uh, as earlier uh, set out. We typically onboard most of our freshers in the first three quarters of the year, and that's what would be our plan in FY24 as well. Sure. And one uh, last question for Vineet. I was just looking at your segment profitability. If you could help us understand what drove what drove the sequential increase in terms of our uh, margins on the manufacturing resources side and simultaneously the the increase on the health life sciences and public services side. No, I think so. It's a it, there's no specific uh, I would say a, a seasonality or anything or a change in the trend. It's a uh, as, as the uh, new people get added, the average cost keeps on moving. Sometimes the on-site offshore ratio changes. That's the uh, that's uh, also sort of changes the, uh, the overall margins. But no structural changes into any of these uh, profiles. For it. Thank you. Thank you, Manik. We will take the last question from the line of Surendra Goyal. Yeah, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So uh, just a, a couple of questions. Good evening, everyone. Uh, firstly, what is the services growth in 4Q? Because if I heard it correct, Sudhir did uh, allude to some license component as well. So uh, we don't call that number out uh, specifically. License. Okay. Uh, Okay, sure. And and secondly, Sudhir, a question for you. The pipeline has been consistently strong. And you guys have obviously done a terrific job there. 
But even the recent slowdown was not preceded by any slowdown in the pipeline. So what gives you comfort that the growth beyond 1Q will be strong to enable you to get to double-digit growth? Is it is it more hope that things improve or is it based on any data points that we should be aware of? See, I think, you know, as, as you said, right, we, there are three reasons why we feel that, you know, there's, there's uh, or broadly from a, so we've got, you know, pipeline is up, large deal pipeline is up, conversions are up, order intake is up. And I think what's holding us back is, as I said, the you know delayed decision making and some of the freezes. That's that's really what we're seeing. So we are expecting some of the hiring freezes as clients. You know, the, it's it's actually a reflection of how they want to manage their calendar year twenty three budget. We expect that to start to ease off by you know towards the end of of, of May of of this quarter rather. And uh, where and the reason is that you know clients still have a book of business to do. We've got. You know, we've been very close to our clients. We've been meeting them and there is work to do, except that budgets are being, you know, it's like, you know, right now held back, but we expect that to come back. And then, you know, obviously our deal ramp ups that we expect to see, you know, ramping up from Q2 onwards uh, as part of this. And, you know, because we are starting, currently starting these transitions, right? We've announced two publicly, as you know, there's Onsemai and, and Curry's that we've announced publicly. In addition to these, there are several other deals that we have won. Uh, and that's you know why we feel that you know we will start to see this pick up from Q2 onwards. As you've seen traditionally, Q2, Q3 have been our stronger quarters, and that's what we are focused on. Sure, thanks a lot. Thank you, Surendra. We'll just take one question from the Q&A bridge that we have got. Uh, Nitin Padmanabhan <laughs> from Investec has asked, uh, "What's the wage hike? When is the wage hike expected?" So we are planning uh, to do the wage hike and uh, in the second quarter of the financial year, and uh, it's uh, expected to be obviously as per the market what the market demands. But uh, if I want to just call it out from a year-on-year perspective, it will be on percentage terms uh, significantly lower than what it was in the past two years. Well, uh. Thank you all for joining this call. Uh, you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Recording stopped.